Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel. What's going on out there, everybody? Yes, I know today is Monday, but y'all know what happened. Y'all know the drill. Uh, I was tied up yesterday in another state. Yes, Texas. And guys, y'all know uh, if you're a mechanic or you're mechanically inclined and you finally take some time off and go visit some family members or whatever, chances are you're going to be asked to look at somebody's car. That, that you you ain't even in mechanic mode. Somebody, one of your cousin, your second, third cousin, just out of the blue, cuz can you come look at my car, man? I ain't in nowhere near mechanic mode, but you know you're gonna get asked that question. All right, so I get asked a lot of questions about, uh, do you think I need a tune up? Is it time for me a tune up? Uh, what do you think wrong with it? I don't know, guys. I did not take my scan to with me because I had no plans to be checking out relatives cars okay so yeah that's that wasn't my thing that's what not what i was there for however the word tune-up came up a lot okay is that a diy job can i do my own tune-up guys uh the way tune-up is defined today is simply spark plugs I, i'm just keeping it real I'm a lot of shops you need a tune-up what does that mean you need spark plugs yeah but y'all know me i talk if y'all listen to me a lot you know how i feel about a tune-up it's not just spark plugs okay but in the society we live in that's what a tune-up mean spark plugs no the goal in my opinion of a tune-up is to help your help your car restore peak performance help get it back to where it was when it was new now depending on how many miles you have on it that's going to be virtually impossible you cannot bring 150,000 mile car back to his original peak performance. <laughs> There's some things or some factors coming to play here. Like where? Yeah. You know, over time, piston rings, will get tired. You may lose compression. You may inadvertently lose power. I don't care how many spark plugs you throw at it. Yeah. Over time, things would just wear, but there is a thing, a feature. There is manufacturer suggested times that they want you to try to help restore your car back to peak performance now the average car up today pretty much have um 100 mile spark plugs i'm no big fan of that in fact uh that sucks i'm against it okay uh so the question become when should you get a tune-up now it, it see if you ask you'll get a different answer from every guy you ask I'm, I'm serious, guys. Uh, Rush Shaw. What's up, Rush? Yeah, man, on a Monday, man. I missed yesterday. I was out of town. You asked Rush Shaw, Rush Shaw. Uh, what, what's up, man? What you think? When should I get a tune-up? He going to tell you something different maybe than what I tell you. You will get a different answer from anybody, from everybody you ask. When do they think you should get a tune-up? You will get a different answer. Uncle Mark. Ask Uncle Mark. Uncle Mark, when do you think I should get a tune-up? His answer may differ from mine. Mine may differ from Russ. So far to so on. Just any mechanics. You may ask him. You will not get the same answer. There's just no no two mechanics are cut out the same, and their recommendations are slightly going to be different, all right, based on a number of factors. It's not that no one man is right and no one man is wrong. When you ask the guy a question, guys, it's all based on their opinion. If you ask me a question, I'm going to give you my opinion on it. I don't know if it's facts or not. If you ask me my opinion, I'm going to tell you what I think you should do. Now, uh, I don't want to just make the whole thing opinionated. Let me put it like that. So we're going to do this real quick. What's up, boy? Sleeper, what's up, man? Gavin Makuchinabo. All right. John Santiago, Florida Jet. What's going on? Um, Uncle Mark in the building. Let's do this real quick, James L. Uh, Chambers. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do freaking this. Everything you need to know before you get in your tune-up. Now, guys, I don't care what shop you go to. Depending on how many miles you got, they will recommend you a tune-up. They don't give a damn if it's running rough, bad, good, or not at all. They're going to recommend you something. That's just the nature of the beast, all right? It's up to you to decipher uh, whether you need stuff or not. I can't go on record knocking shops for recommended, recommending maintenance service. That's what shops do. All right. Now I can. Uh, I'm against them just selling you things just because, you know, they got nothing to do. Yeah. I, everything I try to upsell is I try to make a point that it needed. All right. But, you know, every, every, we're all human, man. Listen, uh, everything you need to know before getting a tune up. 
let's do this first. All right. Um, cartoon up. Oh, uh, it is process of checking. What is a cartoon up? It's the process of checking and replacing engine components that are critical to ignition engine operation. The following items may be included in a full tune up. There go that word again, full tune up. <laughs> go to your average shop. Excuse me, how much is a full tune up? Uh, $300. What does that consist of? Uh, spark plugs. Yeah, okay. Back in the day, I don't know what year this article came out, but this looked like a lot of stuff that justify calling it a tune up. <laughs> okay, spark plugs and wires called boots replacement. Ooh, I don't think I ever just randomly replace boots because of a time interval. Adjust the ignition timing if necessary. Not only is it not necessary, it's impossible. How the hell are you going to adjust the ignition timing on these today's guys? There's what are you going to adjust it with? You got a timing light? You got? I bet Russ, Russ Shaw probably got a timing light. Uncle Mark probably got a time. Look, man, it, there is no adjusting timing on today's cars. Okay? It's just impossible. That is the job now of your computer the car computer it will factor in a lot of input data and adjust timing accordingly okay yeah ain't nobody got no damn time like if necessary replace the fuel filter there go another one what the, who, the hell, who, who got a fuel filter on their car wait a minute what's the date on this damn article fuel filter guys all right let me say it like this if you got a fuel filter that's the perfect time to replace it whether you need it or not okay uh simply because over time, trash can build up in a fuel filter and it could cause problems. OK, so, yeah, there is a maintenance interval for fuel filters. Was I saying? Pump? I meant filters. If you have one, the average car nowadays, guys, the fuel filter is live. It lives with the fuel pump. OK, it's attached to the fuel pump, a little small strainer on the bottom of the freaking pump. All right. Uh, what's the more if necessary? Okay, cleaning the throttle body. Now we up to the 21st century. <laughs> yes, I'm down with cleaning the throttle body, guys, simply because a dirty throttle body blade, when you let your foot off the brake pedal or the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal, what's happening is if there's a lot of carbon buildup on that blade, you could starve your engine of air. Remember, your engine has to breathe. <sighs> It has to suck in a proper amount of air, all right? If that blade is restricted from carbon buildup, you can starve your car of the needed air, and your car will stall out, okay? Now, they're making throttle bodies to where they will not carbon, carbon will not build up on the blades anymore. Everything is changing, guys. So, in fact, throttle bodies don't even have cables going to them now. They're called ETC, Electronic Throttle Control. Yeah, you got an electronic accelerator pedal now on the average car out now. There's no more cable running to your throttle body. There's no more cruise control cable running to your throttle body. Everything is electronically, digitally controlled. So, but throttle body still stands, in my opinion. Uh, you should clean the damn throttle body. If necessary, replace the distributor cap and rotor. Oh, my freaking goodness. Only Uncle Mark got something with a distributor cap. And a freaking rotor. And maybe Russ Shaw with that old minivan he got. Becky. Russ, Becky got a few, uh, a damn. <laughs> do Becky got a distributor on it? If it's a three liter, it do. Three liter MMC engine had a three, a distributor, a cap, and a rotor. I used to replace them all the time. So I remember that very well. What's up, Clarence McKay, MJ Pierce? Hey, listen, guys. Uh, what we leave off? PCV valve. Yes. Every car, I don't give a damn how old it is. There will be some form of positive crankcase ventilation going on. Whether it's a 1920 car or 19, what are we in? 2023 car. Okay, that's almost a given on every gasoline combustion engine. You have to find a way to vent uh, the crankcase. All right, you got to bring those vapors up out of the crankcase in uh, hopes of burning them at a predetermined time that's pretty much how pcv valve work what are the signs that i need a tune-up okay there we go let's read this first engine tune-up service and requirements vary from vehicle vehicle they're right guys in fact, four cylinder may not need a tune-up as soon as often i rented a nissan Sentra over the weekend from budget rental car i got the best gas mileage i ever seen on any <laughs> any <laughs> I, I hate to brag on. I want to I want to so bad say I 
I rented a Jeep and I got the best gas mileage ever. But that just wasn't the case. <laughs> it was a freaking Nissan Sentra. Oh, my goodness. You talking about. OK, that's enough. Fluff doll may hit it and get all excited. All right. Your owner's handbook will tell you when your manufacturers recommend regular tune ups and other maintenance. There are a variety of indications that might indicate when a tune up is needed, regardless of how. That's right. Some cases, no matter how many miles on you. A lot of times, guys, uh, they will say things like 100,000 miles or three months, whichever come first. Yeah, so in some cases, it don't matter what the mileage is on the car. So a couple of things here, guys. Uh, what are the signs that I need a tune-up? Here go a couple of reasons right here. Uh, lights on your dashboard indicate a problem. I'm assuming they're talking about warning lights such as <laughs> your check engine light. Okay, yes, your car feels as though it's about to stall out. That's a pretty good indication you may need to tune up along with cleaning that throttle body. Starting your automotive becomes a chore. What does that mean? I don't know. You're getting, that's a good one. You're getting poor fuel economy, guys. You're burning too much fuel. Uh, you may not only need a tune up, which is spark plugs, you may also need O2 sensors. Okay. Yes, the O2 sensor plays a major role in how much fuel your car burns. Few uh Ford dealer I work at. One of the service writers would always recommend a brake flush. Yeah, dude. Hey, you I don't matter. I don't care what shop you go to. In fact, if a shop don't try to sell you, upsell you some services, the manager might get fired. Okay, that's just like a that's just a ritual, man. That's the you know that's one of those things. All right, a couple of more reasons you may need a tune up. I I mentioned in the title top five. I'm just all over the place. Uh, your car reaches its top speed slowly meaning loss of power okay loss of acceleration uh reaching its top speed slowly guys could be a number of things uh and one in particular um a restricted exhaust yes if your exhaust restricted you're not going to get up and go the way you want to and a tune-up will not fix that replacing spark plugs is not going to clear your freaking exhaust system and allow you some more pep and step all right that's why car need to be diagnosed uh, back in the day, they used a big old scope machine and do this whole big diagnostic. What well, put the car on the computer and let the computer tell you what's wrong with it? Oh my goodness, guys! Uh, yeah, we done went through some times, man. I oh, look at this guy! I keep my time and light as a convert conversation piece. <laughs> and oh, really? I hang up in the garage next to hubcaps and and bowling pins. <laughs> there are some creatures out there that still have their time and light. Rush Shaw is one of them, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what he's driving that requires it, but in case he need it, he have it. All right. So when the engine is making banging noise, how would that constitute a tune-up? Anybody want to tackle that one? Engine idling too roughly? Is that the same as a rough idle or misfire? Okay. This article is all over the place. Car tune-up, what's the process? Let's go over this real quick, man. Doing a tune-up, professionals do a comprehensive inspection of the engine and replace one of defective parts in order to improve fuel atomization and flow efficiency they clean the throttle body they replace your spark plug if your car is equipped with plug wires they're gonna uh replace the spark plug wires the coil boots some cars need more in-depth approach that's what i say instead of guys be careful with this all right especially if you out there oh let's finish this gdi gasoline direct injection engine don't mix the gasoline and the air together at the intake resulted in a large volume of gunky buildup. To avoid engine damage, this accumulation must be eliminated. Yeah, clean out your intake and all that stuff, especially your throttle body. All right, guys, what I was saying is uh, gunky and disc accumulation. In addition to standard, there may be a high fuel, fuel economy. Uh, Okay, we touched on that about the O2 sensors. That is one of the number one contributing factor of poor fuel economy. If your O2 sensors are becoming lazy, ladies and gentlemen, your fuel economy will suffer. Okay, now O2 sensor works uh, in a window. Okay, as far as turning and checking the light, I know we all have become spoiled. We're not replacing jack nothing until we see a check engine light. Unfortunately, you may not always get a check engine light at the time your O2 sensor is that it's failed state. It could be dying a slow death. It could be lazy. But if it's still in that window per the computer, there's no checking the light ever going to come on. And in the meantime, 
you just dump and fuel, dump and fuel, dump and fuel, burning fuel, excessive fuel. And that is also the risk in dealing with um, misfire. <clears throat> That's why if you got some some type of misfire, you most definitely should, should jump on that because what's going on doing a misfire is unburned fuel is being sent. You know, in order to go in your engine, you have to come out, all right? In order to get out, you got to go through the exhaust system. If unburned fuel is making it to the exhaust system, yes, you essentially shortening the life of that $1,000 cat converter. You don't want that to happen. You got that not laying around, huh? I know I don't. So in order to prevent, in fact, every cat converter we sell, we try to also upsell uh, tune-up spark plugs, okay? Because they help. Why are cat converters failing so quickly or so soon? I posed that question on batteries the other day. Uh, is it the car maker's fault? Are they adding too much electronics to these cars and causing an overload to the electrical system? I don't know. Uh, same go with uh, cat converters. There's too much stuff going on in that engine drivability <laughs> where the cat just uh, overwhelm. Okay. I've seen a cat fail as early as 60,000 miles. It's still in the warranty, but why is that happening? All right. Now I'm a mechanic. So y'all got to distinguish the difference. I hate when guys get in my comment section. Oh, I can't believe it's leaking oil. That piece of junk. Like, bro, I be want to say, you know, I got to be careful how I respond or how I reply. But I be want to say so bad, dude, I'm a mechanic. I don't care that the car has oil leak that I'm working on. That's why I'm here. You know, every problem that I pose in the form of a video, there's at least 10 guys got a problem with that car having a problem. <laughs> Mind you, 180,000 miles. I'm just some random high number. They don't care. They still shouldn't have no problem. Like, dude, man, this car got a damn 180,000 miles. Why are you fussing? That cooler should not be leaking. That car should not be leaking anything. <clears throat> so you think I'm mad because it's leaking, big dog? Remember, I do this for a living, all right? If cars don't break, I got to refrain from sounding insensitive. So I won't, all right? Yes, you can come off as, I can't believe JT said that. He want my car to break? No, guys, I would never root for failure or problems of a car just so I can work on it. There are some guys out there who do that. I once read a comment of a guy that leave his brake, his calipers hanging just so he can see if the brake line start leaking just so he can replace them. It's like, you like doing, you like doing brake lines, brake hoses? <laughs> I, some of the things people do, man. Um, but yeah, so. I have no idea why I left off at, but uh, I keep my timeline. My 94 used U-Haul has a racing. Damn. Okay, 94. That's that's understandable. All right, but we're talking about uh, uh, this new stuff. I don't know who this is, guys. Give me a second. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Man, get out of here, man. Uh, potential spam. So... Let's, let's, let's finish up this article, man. Um, how long does a tune-up take? <laughs> it depends on if it's a four-cylinder, six-cylinder, or eight-cylinder. A Hemi has 16 spark plugs in it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, how fast are you to do that? This article do not factor in any of that. They just, how long does a tune-up take? All right, let's read it. Let's entertain it anyway. For most vehicles, a tune-up would take between two and four hours. If you're taking between two and four hours to do a four-cylinder, okay. Uh, it's likely that newer computerized vehicles will require tuning at the higher speed end of the spectrum. In order to properly tune an older vehicle, which contains several mechanical elements, it would take longer. All right. Does a tune-up improve the performance of my car? It's true. That an auto tune-up can improve your car's performance, but it should not replace routine maintenance and service. However, if you see any aforementioned danger flags in your automobile, bring it to uh, a tune-up as soon as possible. All right, let's do this. This last one. What are the benefits? We talked about benefits. We'll talk about it some more. The engine of your car degrades over time, guys. So... Uh, due to normal wear and tear. As a result, your car's fuel efficiency 
will be affected uh, by 4 to 12 if you get it tuned up. In addition, regular maintenance help keep small concern. Down. The goal here, guys, is to make sure we hit home that you stay up on your maintenance, even as it relates to tune-up. When is the best time to have my car tune up? All right. Keep an eye on your car's mileage to see when it is due. I am a big fan of manufacturer suggested time slot. Um, but in this case, they recommend 100,000 miles. Can it go that long? Sure. Your spark plugs, those spark plugs, uh, depending on the plug, the physical actual spark plug, there are some good name brand spark plugs that can hang around for a long time. Uh, champion ngk is a couple of uh, two of the few that uh, fca uses in their product so yeah they have been known to hang around for a minute uh, a tune-up should be performed if the average so i guess what they're trying to say if you your fuel economy is poor or you having poor gas mileage it may be time for a tune-up how much does a tune-up cost that's varies from vehicle to vehicle cylinder to cylinder things like that we're not going to entertain that foolishness so uh, the bottom line I want to say is to hover over your maintenance records or your manufacturer suggest your owner's manual and uh, look under when is your tune-up due. All right, that's that will keep you out of trouble because they factor in a lot of things. I want to think in my main cave, I should say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the way, I finally got the GMC to pass California smog and got my tag. That's what's up. I'm legal again. MJ Pierce was riding dirty for all this time, y'all. He finally got it fixed. That's what's up. MJ. All right. Uh, oh, Vicky got okay. Vicky don't have a three liter. I thought she had a three liter MMC uh with the distributor, coil, cap, and all that. And plug wires. Now this 3-3 got plug wires. 3-3 and a 3-8. It's a cam and block design, guys. So, yeah, it has spark plugs, coils. It has a coil on the side and six plug wires going to each cylinder. So, technically, according to this article, when you're getting ready to replace spark plugs, you should replace wires. It depends on how you look at it, okay? I I, I, I wasn't doing that back in the day when that engine was popular. So, I replaced wires as they fail. But everybody's different. Okay, my urologist told me I needed to. <laughs> you handed me a sample pack of God, ladies, just a cinnamon bun. Wait a minute. Urologist? Did I pronounce that right? Told you that. Uh, what's up, man? Uh, yes, Dad's Garage. Uh, I wasn't on yesterday, so I had to make up for a day. Got to keep my word and keep my schedule of two live streams a week. All right. So if I miss a day that I'm supposed to come on, I just make up for it. Plus, Monday is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the O2 sensors and mass airflow sensors. Was also replaced. Once you do a throttle body cleaning, uh, need to buy the equipment to do it. That's what's up, uh, MJ. Philly D in the building. What I mean, uh, though, I think manufacturing intervals are way too long on certain things. They'll tell you when the tune up is due. Uh, yeah, I guess you can call it that when it's due or when they recommend it's due. Now, we as a mechanic going to think everything the manufacturers suggest or recommend, you taking too damn long, dog. I mean, golly. Just say, for instance, you look in your owner's manual and it say 100,000 miles. Mechanic going to do this all the time. Nah, dog. Nah, that's too long. Don't wait 100,000 miles. It, but the, the thing is, we don't want you. Like I say, guys, that CAC converter is expensive. If it going to take you $200 periodically every 30,000 miles to help prolong the life of your cat, I say throw some plugs in it every 30,000 miles. Or every 60,000 miles. If it calls for 160,000 miles, sound pretty good and I'm good. All right. So, yeah, uh, the manufacturers, they can get a little lax. They don't factor in real world driving. All right. Yeah, they don't factor in you and Cousin Pookie riding around, you know, chilling, having fun or whatever. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I work as a technician for the post office and we still use, damn. We are running 88 to 93 years. Damn. <laughs> 88. My Nissan truck is a 93. Uh, your S10 trucks. Okay. Ryan Outdoor Channel. That's what's up. The man still got a. You know what it takes to adjust timing? I don't know if some of you young guys understand. We used to have a, a angle head uh, wrench that go down 
and then hang a hard left and then hang a whole, another hard right. The goal was to get to that boat on top of the distributor. So you can loosen it and turn the distributor. My thing with that is, just like alignment, I always have a theory about this. If that boat is never removed and that distributor ever moved, how does timing ever get off? <laughs> Until I really thought about it, and um, it's the same go for alignment. The, just say the alignment is on a, a suspension system that uses uh, struts. The two boats are holding the struts. Those are the camera adjustment, right? If those are never tampered with, never touched, never loose, how does camber ever in his life get off? So technically, guys, you're not really – you're checking for your angles. When you're doing alignment, you're checking angles, right, with a machine. You got heads on each wheel and looking at such and such. If your camera is off and those boats have never been tampered with, those camera adjustment boats on the struts, never been fooled with, again, it makes you wonder – well, how the hell camera get off? You know what I'm saying? What, what, guys? When you're doing it, when you're making adjustments on alignment, you're merely adjusting for some worn out parts, some parts that may have worn. All right, you're not. The parts are not worn enough to justify replacement, but they they are worn enough to justify some adjustments. Okay, so if your bushings in your control arm wore out a little bit and it caused your car to drop a little bit camera may show off negative all right so you do your inspection remember I always do a front suspension check before you do an alignment right you don't feel it loose but it's a little loose but not enough to feel like messing with that damn control arm ah, it ain't that loose dog it'd be all right but my point is when you make an adjustment on alignment you merely adjusting you have you have to again even as it relates to toe Y'all know how tow is, the tie rod, the big boat to hold the tie rod. You pop that loose and you, you turn it in order to make the adjustment. If that boat never freaking comes off, how does tow ever become out of whack? You're adjusting for worn out parts or wearing out parts. That's not worn out enough to justify replacement. That control arm, the bush is not wore out enough to, you need a, you need a whole control arm. No, we can adjust it now. When you start making major adjustments, yeah, you either got something bent or some bushing really gone. So, yeah, it depends on the amount. That's why alignments, uh, specs, they like to give you a window. All right? Just be in here, dog. You ain't got to be all right down the damn middle. Just stay in this window right here. We good. All right? A lot of uh, adjustments are based off windows. Damn, I'm off topic. But, um, yeah, my man still got his test. That's what's up, right? All right, that's crazy. I thought those trucks would be... <laughs> Damn, somebody trying to put them out of their misery. Nope, just running on wishes and dreams. Uh, Nick, what up, Nick? Uh, customer just had a AAA put a battery in a... Man, this is a 2023 model. Okay, let's give it this car a benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt. It's a 2023. We're still in that year. Let's just, for shits and giggles... Damn, I didn't mean to cuss. I hope YouTube ain't listening. Let's say this car got 120,000 miles. They just done a lot of driving. Now, will you get a car some slack if the battery has failed? Okay. Right. It's not a year old yet, but it's 120,000 miles old. So, does driving a lot kill a battery? It's hard to say, man. All right. Battery is just not lasting the way they used to. Again, I posed the question on who's to blame for. Is it the car makers with all the electronics or is it just poorly built design battery? Damn, Nick, it's crazy. 72 Chevy El Camino, 94 Sierra. Dang, why y'all hanging on to this old stuff? You have to be the bigger man. Don't be like these frail YouTubers that take negative comments personal. You doing, man, I never do. I never take anything personal, but I still, I still like to comment or reply. All right. My reply is always based on the comment given. If you come at me file on some okie dope, you know what I'm saying? Hey, my reply going to be accordingly. So I have no problem with that. But that's what's up, Justin Cinnamon. We try to do proper tuna at the shop, but we also have customers that have misfire on ceiling the four and they just want what? One spark plug. And here we go again. Yes. Guys, as it relates to tune up, upselling tune up is the most risky thing you can do. Because you got to keep in mind, 
what a customer going to expect after you've done a so-called tune-up. That's why in some cases, it's best to just call it replace spark plugs. The customer ain't going to expect a lot out of that, but they will expect a perfectly running car after you done came in there and convinced them to buy a tune-up. Right? You, man, you at 80,000 miles, it's really time for this tune-up. And the lady going, damn, maybe he's right. I have been getting poor gas mileage. But all you see is dollar signs because you're trying to upsell some work. That's why I'm a fan of uh, digging out of the customer. Are they having any problems before I just randomly write up a tune-up? That car got to have 30,000 miles for me to come up to you and say, it's time for a tune-up. Why? No reason. It's just time. Yeah. If I hit sense any, yeah, maybe you're right. I have been running a little rough. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What you say? Yeah, it's been running a little rough. Maybe you're right. Go ahead and do the No, no. We need to diagnose it and find out what's wrong with it. Be careful selling tune-ups. All right? You can cause yourself some freaking headaches. People, customers are expecting a perfectly running car after you done, after you have convinced them to spend three, $400 on spark plug, air filter, PCV, all of this. You thinking you're just doing some easy gravy maintenance, but that customer thinking when they leave, that car going to be purling like a freaking kitten. So, hey, man, hey, enter at your own risk, man. I'm very, very, very careful upselling a tune-up, all right? <laughs> Sometimes, like I say, I use the word, you ready for your spark plugs? <laughs> I don't say you ready for your tune-up because, again, they looking, they're going to be looking for When they leave your shop, let them mess around and get to that light and that car buck again. They turn it right back around. You just did a tune-up on my car, and it ain't fixed. What ain't fixed? That bucking that a tune-up supposed to fix. You ain't said nothing about no bucking. I ain't say nothing. You came and told me, dog. You told me I need a tune-up. Or you just, was you lying? Or was you just trying to get my money? All I know, I ain't say, I just came in for an oil change. Next thing I know, you come up here talking about I need a tune-up. How you know I need a tune-up? Because he saw dollar signs. Every mechanic is guilty of that. Me too. So I'm very smooth with mine. Oh, man. You know, you need some spark plugs, big dog. You having any problems? What's wrong? Uh, anything going on? And they want one stupid spark plug. A uh, 2000 Patrick. Damn. Boy, y'all got some old 2000 Rangers? Okay. Uh, not a leak anywhere on a 2010 Escape. Glenn Goodman. That is uh, a good thing. All right. Kudos to your vehicle for hanging around that long. Well, still in the Rangers, yes, uh, they could potentially take longer with eight spark plugs. And a poor ass says, wow. Okay. I'm not familiar with that vehicle. But I hear you. Just spun 100K. New plugs and wires going on with symptoms. Just preventing. There you go. Thought about it already. <laughs> okay, Patrick. Interesting. All right. Do a tune-up before you go for a small test. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, it should help. Now, the thing about the small test, guys, not many, not many, uh, what I'm trying to say, emission test facilities uh, have the fire gas analyzer anymore. Remember, guys, that is post-96. It's not even hardly any of those cold cars on the road anymore. All right? So, oh, man, uh, the, the last emission place I went to, he got rid of his fire gas analyzer because he never used it anymore. So everything from OBD started in 96, the connector and all that stuff. It was some guinea pig cars out there in 95. But in 96, it was fully implemented. OBD stands for onboard diagnostic, meaning your computer <laughs> technically in the background is supposed to be diagnosing your car from an emission standpoint. Okay, the whole sole purpose of emissions is to not let fumes exhaust gases or fumes uh vapors escape into the atmosphere okay cars are now equipped with charcoal canisters and things like that to store those vapors for a later date it can't hold it forever so eventually it's got to let it out but um the environment we live in now do not want any fuel vapors out in the atmosphere or you get a check in like okay when that <laughs> leak detection pump find it out all right, I got to move on. I'm behind. Damn, how did that happen? 
Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's what's up, MJ. I've seen guys get 30% better for women just by getting that girl what? in a diet. Okay. <laughs> getting that girl on a diet. Okay, if she lose weight, it's not pulling so much. Okay, just the cinnamon. It's a family channel, man. What you doing? All right. Uh, what's it good? Uh, Willie Estrada. What's going on, my friend? How are you? All right. Yes, Willie's in the building. Didn't know you went over. It was a minor vacation. God, when I'm on vacation, when I'm gone, I, technically not a vacation. I went for the weekend. My channel is still on autopilot. And I told y'all, man, I got so many, vid so much video footage on my phone. I haven't had time to get off to get in the computer. So I just basically, Fluffy Mexicanic showed me how to do some things with, with an app. I can just edit from here. It's his scene. I got so many videos on here that just need to be edited. So if I'm, at a break while I'm on vacation. No, nah, no. My mama think I'm over here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working. I'm YouTubing. I know I'm on vacation, but it's just, oh, give me one second. But publish. And that, that video go out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's no big deal. That's why I don't understand why channels not doing shorts video. I, I even, I even, Pine Hollow. I like, I even, why you don't do shorts video, man? It just spreads you out there. And uh, open the eyes of more potential viewers. Okay, everybody ain't cut out for that, right? I even got some nice, good ass long videos. So should offset each other, but I don't know. My RT has almost ninety seven on it. Probably what? Didn't know you went. On. Yeah, I had to get away for a couple of days. But like I say, you couldn't tell because the channel was still running. I see questions, I answer them. I mean, oh my goodness, what was we doing before this little? Guys, it's not only just a hello, goodbye. It's not only just a phone. It's a freaking mini computer. What was we doing before this? Who old enough to remember uh, the beeper? <laughs> the little black beeper. Beep, 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 beep. Then you go to a phone, and then you call whoever number showed up in the freaking beeper. Okay, all right. You still need a cord to go to the payphone booth, though. Ain't no more beeper because everything is right here. My point is... I can't live without this. All right. I remember one time I forgot it. I went off to work. <sighs> yeah, Doc, man. I took some time off, man. Indeed, old girl, 80 back. Uh, requires more than a modern automobile, in including a carburetor. Golly, carburetor? Check ignition timing. Check and replace PCV. Distributor cap and run. Ooh. Yeah, y'all way back there. Okay. Uh, 16 plus to buy here. Yes, you have a Hemi in your 300, right? Yep, Grady Morgan, what's going on? Jason Picaro, what's going on, Grayson? How you doing, man? 2017 Toyota Corolla with a four-inch body lift and wheelchair kit. Leaking coolant. New tubes are $1,500 and $500 shipping. Tore it all apart. New thermostat. Housing from Toyota. Made all new hoses. $1,100. Mm. On a 2017. Now, see, where are all the... You know what I'm saying? Let let Jason had said a 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. I guarantee you the comment would have been full of already. See, see, Chrysler, piece of junk. I don't see nobody here. See, 2017 Toyota already. Toyota's a piece of junk. Hey, we ain't gonna see that. Like I told you, man. Uh every car maker, I, I kid about this all the time, but every car maker have issues. It's just you guys are up front seeing where a lot of the issues is with Chrysler because some knucklehead car guy, YouTube wannabe mechanic, ain't got nothing else better to do but make videos showing some of this stuff. So over and over and over, this getting bedded in your head. Pretty soon, y'all gonna be like, I can't take it no more. I'm never buying a Chrysler. <laughs> That's not my goal here. My goal here is like, Technically, to help the DIY guy, but y'all watch so many of the repair videos I upload. I literally stopped doing ticking videos. Oh, my God. Another one? What do you mean another one, dude? The last one I did was three days ago. <laughs> you never do the same. You never do something repetitious like that. People will clown the product big time. I, I get a little sensitive, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. When you just jump on here and say, uh, Christ, a piece of junk. I would never buy one. Because... In my opinion, you got the wrong opinion of the video. 
I'm not here to sell you cars. And I'm not here to convince you what car to buy. I'm just showing you if you have this car and you have this problem, this is likely your problem. You can do it yourself if you think so. But a lot of you guys misconstrue the videos or the channel to the point where y'all thinking it's a sales thing. Again, not a car salesman. I'm not trying to convince you to buy what it is you see me working on. I was working on a van the other day. One guy, I'll never buy a piece of shit van. <clears throat> like, so you watch the video of me putting a PCV vibe on. And that's hard to get to. I'd never buy that. Okay, you cuckoo. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, but the, the flip side of it is I don't want you to stop watching them. I just need to educate you as I go. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's not a sales pitch here. It's just if you have this vehicle and this problem, this might be your problem. I'm not saying this happens all the time. All right. Every time I turn the YouTube on, JT on again with another piece of John Chrysler. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I'm looking, I'm searching you, I'm searching uh Toyota Master Text, Toyota Text. I see maybe one. Big dude, uh, the little dude out of uh, I forgot his name, it's Toyota Channel. I see one. So you telling me Toyotas ain't breaking? It's not that they're not breaking, it ain't some knucklehead clown out there displaying everything. I'm a YouTuber, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm not a car salesman. Let me get that out of the way. Uh, I am behind. I see some green power stroke Jude. Y'all know Jude. Jude out in California. I don't know where Jude from, but um, real good friend of mine, guys. Um, man, me and Jude, I don't know if I I schedule always clash. Everybody's schedule is jacked up, man. Like, I have a hard time even getting on Fluffy channel because he come on late. I come on at eight. They may be too early for him. Cause he don't get out to nine, so it's always uh some weird time everybody on that will. I had once had a a scheduled live stream appearance with um uh, Ford Bossman, Ford Bossman, Ford Bossman, whatever his name, the Ford guy. All right, you're pretty big on YouTube, right? Our schedules clashed, and we I'm Eastern Standard Time. I said we're going on at eight. <laughs> he shows up at nine when I'm done. And then we never could reschedule it to get it back on. He's busy. I'm busy. It's just, um, I don't know. But, yeah, Jude is uh, uh, he's a hell of a YouTuber. Um, Y'all go check my dude out. Thank you, Jude, for the donation. Remember, guys, the donation goes back into the channel where we can keep the channel flowing by whatever equipment we need around here, and especially when I do live streams. My next live stream ain't until 200,000 subscribers. That has slowed down for some reason. I don't know. What we in September? August was a kick butt month for me. September, guys, I'm doing the same amount of work, <laughs> same, not the same videos, but the same intensity of videos, the same number of videos. But here in September, that's traditionally a slow month. <laughs> yeah, the views go down, the watch time go down, the subscribers go down. So it's like you hit a brick wall, but thank goodness for the shorts video because they spread out more, but even those views are down. So it's a rough month in September, so just get through it because when December come up and all these advertisers are giving YouTube money to showcase my stuff, YouTube got me in mind because he know they know you know, YouTubers out there working, putting out content so we can say these ads or put these ads on a lot of online mechanics or whoever's out there working. That's why I say just keep going. Just keep truck truckling, man. Thank you, Jew. By the way, um, uh, yes, power stroke Jew. That diesel, I think that means that's got something to do with diesel. <laughs> I'm so not a diesel guy. More power to you, power stroke Jew. My car won't start. I looked in my engine bay and there is a loose wire. It is a big red one. <laughs> do you think that is the problem? It's so hard to say if that's a red positive battery connection. Yes. Uh, when you say not start, are you saying no crank or no start? There's a difference. All right. But yes, any kind of red wire laying around can't be good. Look into that, my friend. Find out what that is and get that corrected. That could be dangerous as well. What's up, Paul P? How you doing, man? I'm behind, guys. I'm trying is the red wire <laughs> Dermot. I'm behind, man. Proud. Is that Proud Islander? That look like or all of y'all. Oh, I think she's slick. She done got on her, her sneaky page, a sneaky. She done got on her spy YouTube channel. And uh, 
Yeah, spying around. Guys, I got to go to the bottom because it's 9 o'clock. Always cut the blue wire. Yeah, yeah. What are y'all talking about? Early S10 trucks had a lousy bottom end. Rev the crap out of them to launch. Dang. Uh, one ton. Okay. Oh, righty. <laughs> What's up to Triton? Uh, like and share. Yes, that's all, Ollie. Out the broadcast. JT Salute. What's going on, my friend? How is your typical Monday? Okay. I don't know what Dermot is, man. What in the world is a Dermot? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, which vans? We have the red Ram Tradesman, the Promaster, Mercedes Metric vans, and I'm a chance in the engine with the aluminum body. I'm not sure what uh, Dark Man talking, uh, talking about. Those S10 four cylinders only held three quarts of oil. Had nylon timing gears, which contributed to their failure. Wow. That's them independent boys talking now. Y'all done went over my head. What the hell y'all talking about? Wait, don't leave me out. I'm the host here. I'm playing. I'm playing. I love you independent guys. Y'all, um, the Iron Duke. <laughs> okay. Dermot replacement non-OEM parts. All right. Somebody, I think that was all already cracked the joke about Mopar going on strike. So all we're going to be getting is uh, Dermot parts. I don't know how true that is, but this may be my last week on the job if that's the case. I cannot, I refuse to install. Let me stop before y'all get me in trouble. Dermot could be a potential sponsor someday. What if they go, JT, we want to sponsor you to sell our product. But wait, back in the day, you used to talk smack about us. No, I didn't. I never said your real name. I, you, don't, you don't know what I was saying. You don't know what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're smart with us. You're pretty damn smart. Okay. Okay. You got the sponsorship deal. You got it. You're right. I never heard our name, you know, pronounced exactly how it should be. You're a smart one, JT. I think you was talking about us, but I can't prove it because you never pronounced it the way it's supposed to be pronounced. Let me stop. Uh, man, y'all got me off track, man. The dude who has, hold on, the dude who has gas mixing with the oil has a problem. I suggested that he do a compression test. Interesting. Mostly the old ones but have a lot of newer ones closer to downtown. What's up, Darren Core? How are you, my friend? What's popping, man? Um, it's a two stroker, not a number. Yes, Darren in the building, guys. All right. I'm headed to the bottom, guys. Y'all know what happened when I lose track. I am Jay Pierce. If I had an oil injection, uh, I had to adjust it after purchase. <laughs> All right. What's up, oil? Probably only California has the oil. Man, I was going bye-bye because there's no more of those cars on the road. My 93 Nissan truck used to require it, but I no longer have to get emissions on it anymore, so I don't worry about it. I got to give me a tire. I really want to get that car what you call it when you bring them back to life? I'm finna up, up. I'm finna, you know, revitalize that car. I don't know the word. I'm about to make it back relevant again. So I got to get a tire. Walmart, the only one sells a tire that size. So y'all give me a break, man. All right. Uh, clowns in California. I still emission testing cars from 1979. Okay. That's a different part of the country. I'm not sure. Maybe it's warranted out there. I made it to the end. Model T on 17. Okay. My power album. Turbo Tom, what's going on, man? How are you? Turbo Tom, love those Model T's. He's a Model T guy. A Honda Odyssey still passing smog in New Jersey. I don't know how. Now I know Jesus is real. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a really good example. Our small test, they only sniff test the early model. And my 95 Neon was OBD2, but the mission station didn't know, so they always sniff tested him. Wow. I think it started in 96, if I'm not mistaken. Turbotone was Uncle Sanford. <laughs> right, with those Model T's, Fred Sanford and Son. Oh, uh, don't forget, no, you're coming. Okay, guys, I got to go to the bottom pages I had once. See, I said mentioned pages 10 minutes ago. This is how far behind I am. Um, yes. Uh, Proud Island. I'm going to the bottom, guys. Meet me down now because I'm going to start wrapping this up. It's 9 o'clock. Restoration. Damn. That's what I was trying to say. I'm going to restore my Nissan truck back to its lowrider years. 
when I was young, cool with a Jerry curl and a low rider truck. And uh that was the style then. Okay. That is no longer the style, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody going tall. Everybody went 20s, 22s, 24s. Back in my day, we went wide. Today's knuckleheads going tall. I'd much rather be bow legged than slew footed or knock kneaded. Whatever. All right. Thank you, MJ Pierce. I know it was a word I was looking for. Dermot is a better quality part to put in your car when you can't get OEM. Yes. I. I I assume that's the case. Okay, I have never had. I mean, I've if I'm only if, if I'm given a Dermon part to put on, yeah, I, I put them on all the time. I just be talking smack, man. Ninety six K. What happened in ninety six K? I don't know. MJ man, use it to pull boats in lakes, building. They teach still cool. <laughs> What's up, Darren? Call. Uh, don't restore that truck, bro. Whoa, wait a minute. Uh, donate them. <laughs> Just to Ukraine, no. Keeping my damn truck, okay? No, man. Who is this? Justin Cinnamon, you, you done lost it, bro. Guys, it is 9 o'clock. I'm hungry. I have to go eat. So I'm about to wrap this up. Mopar water pumps from Mex. What does that mean? Who is Mex? Hey, Fluff Dog in the building. What up, Fluffy? Dang, Dad's Garage got a new pick. I know. I saw that. I recognize that. Joe Demon is was about motor oil. Nothing crazy. Uh, OEM water pumps failing out the box. First two weeping and barren leaking out the 100 miles. What's going on? Hey, man. Uh, it's about to get worse than that, man. As long as them four cylinders hitting. Fluff, man, I got the best set of gas mileage out of that Nissan Sentra I've seen in a long time. Oh, I missed this green. Uh, top reason you need a tune-up because I said so. That's one of those guys that come up front. Ma'am, you do for a tune-up. Hey, Fluffy probably didn't hear my part when I say Careful with the tune-ups because people are expecting their car to run perfect after you done sold them $300 worth of, you know, stuff. <laughs> All right. They didn't say nothing about it, but they also didn't expect you to say something about it. So uh, I'm very careful with upselling tune-ups. I try to do it in a creepy, sneaky way. How you doing, ma'am? Oh, by the way, when the last time you had a tune-up? Baby, I ain't never had a tune-up. You think it's about time? I mean, damn, you got 96,000 miles on it. Yeah, I've been one. I've been noticing in that, you know, hesitation or whatever. So, be careful upselling tune-ups. Is all I'm saying. And what? In in other words, make sure it's from a maintenance standpoint only. If they got problems before you do a tune-up, if those spark plugs are not visibly, you pull it out and you can see. Yep, that was her problem right there. Look at that electrolyte. Look at that. That was her problem. But if you pull all those six spark plugs out, don't see nothing wrong with them, and she talking about she got a misfire, I don't know. You just want to screw in spark plugs and give her a car out. That's some risky stuff. But um, Fluffy likes to sell tune-ups, I see. All right? I don't know. what What's the tune-up? I'm going to the bottom, Fluffy. What's the recommended tune-up on that Nissan Sentra? I want to say that was a 2023 because I got the best gas mileage, and that car had 50,000 miles on it. It's a four-cylinder, look like. So when is... The manufacturer recommending y'all replace the spark plug. I don't know why I'm still bragging on a Nissan Sentra, but uh, 100K? Damn. What well, is it? The, what plugs in it? I mean, it's not Nissan don't make spark plugs, so they use a, uh, like we use NGK and um, um, the other company. But um, damn, that Nissan Sentra. Tune up is recommended at 100k. Wow, that is interesting. Okay, considering what good gas mileage I got out of that. NGK, I read him. All right, so there you have it, guys. And like I say, a lot of a lot of things come into play as it relates to um, if you think you need a tune up. Okay, but keep in mind today's cars are tune up and nothing more than spark plugs and maybe an air filter and some little Nick Peak added on to spice it up to make it sound big. Because the manufacturers probably didn't suggest none of that. It's the shops. All right? We all adults here. We all mechanics here. So I can talk like this. If I had a room full of consumers, no, I wouldn't be talking reckless like this. But I'm in. I'm a part of this industry, so I can't dog it out. However, um, yeah, in order for a shop to survive, uh, it has to engage in selling maintenance. Required maintenance. Okay? Brake flush, cooling flush, you name it. Is that stuff needed? 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. At some point in time, brake fluid need to come. The old brake fluid need to come out of your car and new brake fluid go in. Same go with cooling and everything else. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up with MJ Pearson, Kalito Helton. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. AC Plus ain't good. Uh, I don't know. AC Delco. Who running AC Delco? And what they all about? I don't know, man. In the early 2000s, some GM products have plug rated up to, damn, 200K. Of course, not all made it that far. All right. So why do car makers suggest you get a spark plug change so late? Are they condoning cat converter failure? I don't know. I don't want to start no conspiracy theory. But that's interesting, my guy. There are easier ways to steal them. <laughs> all right. I got to go, man. Last one, dark man. Uh, I used to run auto light in the dark because they ran a long time before having issues with my high mileage 318. Yeah. Your spark plug of choice matters. All right. Don't use, uh, what's the name of that spark plug? Split fire. Oh, let me stop. I'm sorry, split fire. I didn't mean y'all. I didn't mean, you know, you, you might want to sponsor me someday. I ain't going on record. Saying nothing bad about split fire, but um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever used split fire. Uh, that funny looking spark plug that got the oh my goodness, uh, I don't know how they hung around as long as they did. I'm a believer that depends on the engine varies of the plug we use. Every engine, like something different, Cataline, uh, K Team Helton. Interesting. Uh, how was your time? Now? Oh man, it was cool, man. And the Lone Star, it was great. It was great. Weather, I think we hit 90 in one day, 89 the other day. But uh, I was a cowboy. Uh, man, what happened to my hat? My hat is now, man. I was Garth Brooks. <laughs> I had to walk down and everything. It was like, nigga, just call me JT Brooks. I was looking for my good time. Where my damn um, good time? I forgot. I left it here in Atlanta. So I ain't had no good time. But I did have, I go got me a pair of Garth tight jeans. You know, cowboys wear them tight leaves jeans. Always. And they got to be tight. They can't be loose. You know, bros, we like to sag. So I couldn't sag that night because I was guard. I was JT Brooks. All right. And I had the buckle, the big old buckle in the front. Yeah, you know how cowboys do it. And uh, I had the boots. I spent $200 for a pair of snakeskin boots just to find out they were the wrong kind of boots. But I'm stuck with them and I like them. So I'm going to keep them. Uh, the hat. Man, those hat ranges from freaking forty dollars all the way up to four hundred dollars. <laughs> like, who was out there buying a damn four hundred dollar cowboy hat? Whoa, John Wayne himself. Who else gonna do that? I've always had uh, this is my USA. And this is why I had the Fourth of July, but it ain't Fourth no more. So yeah, I mean, I gotta go, man. What y'all doing? What the hell am I doing? Where do these people come from? Mopar Brooks. <laughs> Mopar Brook, uh, Patrick McDonald laser in it. Yeah. When I purchased the El Camino, I did a tune up and 350 potential white spark plugs. Okay. I ran MSD 6A multi spark plugs and high voltage in the dark, but the electrical system was crap and kept killing the boxes. Wow. Guys, I got to go. All right. I'm going to put on my Garth Brooks outfit because I got to take some pictures. So that's all I have, man. I'll see y'all Thursday, man. I think Fluff come on tomorrow. All right, depending on how lady y'all, I got to jump on there. I got to make a point to jump on there. I've been slacking lately, man. Uh, a lot of you guys go live, and I try to catch y'all. What do you mean, wait? Wait on what? Uh, my good time in the other room, I will play y'all. What Gart sing? I don't know what Gart sing. I like Gart Brooks, though. I got a roll, though. That's all I have. Uh, laser. What's a laser? Uncle Mark, have a good night. Way out there in... Uh, Canada. Canada. Okay. That's, it sounds far. I don't know if it's far or not. Canada. That's where Uncle Mark from. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Just kidding. Yes. Oh, you were playing. You're talking about waiting like you. All right. I'm out, guys. That's all I have. Thanks for watching.